All right, so I'm going to show how to open up and disassemble this ASUS model UX360C. Um, it can also be UX360CA. Uh, there might be other model numbers, but those are the ones that I know that for this that I'm working on. Okay, so first what you want is to get a T5 screwdriver. So you'll use the T5 bit and you'll remove all of these. One, two, three, four. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All right, then underneath the two back covers here, so um, you'll have these little things that are kind of just glued in place or double stick adhesive. So you'll have to like peel them up. You can use a pry tool. I just use my fingernail and kind of peel them out. Okay, once you do that, you'll need to switch to a Phillips a PH1 or a J1 screwdriver and then remove those two screws. <clears throat> once you remove those two screws, you can open the laptop up. If your hinge is broken or something and you can't, um, then you'll just have to try and work with it. But pretty much what you do, um, I'll show how to replace the hinges because on this model, the hinge actually cracked. Um, so as you can see, it broke. Yeah, it broke off. Um, so I'll show that in a bit. So first what you want to do, be very careful when you separate this because there's an adhesive holding the trackpad cable and also the keyboard cable um, that like it's adhesive um, stuck to the main board. So you can't really open it that far. But basically just get your fingernails or pry tool, go along the outer edges all the way around. It might take a few passes, but basically you just go in there, pry it up just like this. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. All right, just like this. Go all the way around. This one might come out a little bit easier. If you can, it helps to kind of fold the screen all the way back like this. <clears throat> so that way you can kind of work around the top edge, okay? And make sure it turn it's off because sometimes you might accidentally push the button. But um, yeah, so just keep going all the way around, just like this. Hopefully you can see that. Um, yeah, so pry it up. Take your time. You don't want to like break all the clips or anything. Okay. So just go all the way around. I don't know what you can see. It's kind of tough keeping this in view because I have to keep lifting it. But pretty much you get the idea. Pry all the way around. Again, don't lift it too high because if you do, the cables underneath, they'll get yanked on and you don't want to do that. Okay, let me see if I can show you. So here you can see there's the, um, let's see if you can see this. I don't know if you can. Um, okay. So if you can see, um, there's the keyboard cable right here, that white sticker that I'm pointing at. So here you kind of have to peel it up slowly. And then there's also the um, the cable here, sorry, this one. Um, this is the trackpad cable. So first what you wanna do, I'll show you close up after I take it out, but there's a little connector here with a latch. You need to lift that up. To pull the connector out, get as close as you can to where the adhesive is, and then kind of like peel it up, and then you can pull this. Once you peel up all the adhesive, you can pull this out. Okay, so putting it back is easier because the adhesive won't be holding it down. If you want, you can put some tape or something over the adhesive so it's no longer holding it. They, I think they put it like that just to make it harder to work on because when it's assembled, there's no way it's going to yank itself out. Um, the keyboard one, same thing. You kind of want to slowly peel it. Since I already peeled it once, it's easier. But um, if you work on it, you can kind of lift this a little bit and then kind of like pull it slightly further down from the base and that would help you get a better reach. Um, I don't know how I'm gonna show this on camera. Um, I'll probably unhook it and then just show you what it looks like underneath. So once you can peel up the adhesive, let me peel up more of it. So then I can show you what it looks like. So here you can see on the other side. So this thing, um, the cables uh, stuck all the way down the motherboard or the logic board. So you have to kind of like slowly peel it up. Be very careful because if you flex, if you bend this or make a crease in it, you could damage it and then your keyboard won't work. So um, when you work on this stuff, you want to make sure to be touching something metal or grounding yourself. Um, if you want, you can sit on the ground and that would kind of help. 
Um, but yeah, basically this has a connector just like the other one. You flip this little latch, you probably can't see that. I'll show it to you once I take it out. But once you flip that latch, you can pull the cable out and you can take the whole keyboard off. Okay, then you can set it aside. So I'll show you the keyboard. If you need the keyboard, a replacement keyboard, this is the model number. All right, I don't know if you can see that. There's the model number for that. And then the trackpad, they don't have a model number there, but if you use the model number of the laptop, you'll probably get it. Okay, this keyboard, when you replace it, you actually will have to replace this whole piece. Um, they might sell the keyboard alone, but if you do, you'll probably need like a thing to melt plastic, a 3D printer pen or something like that, just so you can melt new plastic in place, or you have to use some kind of glue or epoxy. Um, but yeah, so that's the whole top keyboard trackpad assembly. Okay, now that you have the whole thing flipped over, you can see the how the rest of it is. So the battery here, you'll want to disconnect that first. So there's a thin plastic film here. I don't know if you can even see that. It's very clear. Um, so you might not be able to see it. It's very see-through. Um, but once you get that, you'll see the connector. It gets pushed down in place. Let me zoom in a bit, actually, and see if I can show this. So... Okay, here. So hopefully you can see that. Um, but pretty much you grab a corner of the connector and then you pull it up. Okay, it's going to be tough. But you can try and use this cable uh, or this piece of tape here, but it's kind of tough. So I pry it, I pull the, the tape while I kind of pry it up. And then also try and push down this board so it doesn't get pulled up with it okay just like that okay and once you get up one corner you can kind of go around and you can lift up the whole thing don't use metal tools because you can short out this um, and once you get the battery connector out you can hold the power button just to drain any additional power oops sorry it's still zoomed in <laughs> then you can just hold the power button to drain any additional power out okay so you don't want to work on it when there's still power in the system. Okay, I'm not going to take everything out. I'm just going to show what I did for this. Um, but I'll point out where the things are. So here you can see the battery connectors are all the battery screws. So if you were to take out the battery, there's one, two, three, four, five. Um, looks like five screws. Um, there might be screws underneath. Uh, I'm not sure. It doesn't look like it doesn't look like it but yeah since I'm not taking it out I won't know for sure um, then you can see there's the speakers here there's the cable that runs along and then the speaker cable connects up here to this little part um, so this yeah the speakers connect all the way and then go over here then you got the IO board which has the power switch it has the volume buttons it has the LEDs, um, the lights, the indicator lights, the SD card, and this USB port, as long as uh, as well as the wireless card. The wireless card, um, it looks like these antennas would be kind of tough to remove. Um, so you'll have to actually guide the antenna wire out first, because um, usually you want to lift it from the tail, but the tail is actually um, held in place by this little, um, I don't know what you call it but this part, it overhangs over the wire. So you have to kind of uh, undo the wiring from this side first. And then when you have more slack, you can pull up the antenna at an angle from the tail. Don't try and pry it from the front or you'll damage them. Um, and then I'm pretty sure these, the two connectors here are will be like these connectors. I'll take it out so you can see for the screen, but these parts, I don't wanna take out the logic board just because I don't want to mess with stuff when I don't need to. Um, all right, then you got the, this looks like a M.2 SSD. Um, looks like there's two notches in it, so it's most likely a SATA M.2. Um, so I don't know if it'll support PCIe, NVMe, that you'll probably have to look up online, see if this, uh, if the model you have specifically will support um, NVMe, PCIe, uh, SSDs, um, but this one has an M.2 uh, SATA SSD, it looks like. All right, so now I'm going to show how to remove the screen. There's two connectors here, um, so again, make sure you disconnected the battery and held the power button to drain the power. 
Um, I don't think the RAM is replaceable on this. The laptop's pretty thin, so most likely it's just soldered to the board. Um, but yeah, to remove the screen, what you want to do is undo these cables. So to undo this, I just get my fingernail underneath the corner of this piece, and then you can just pop it up just like this. All right, just like that. So make sure you're prying only the connector, not not the not the part that's attached to the board. Same thing with this one. Just get your fingernail, pry it underneath, and pop it out. Okay. Then you can guide the wire out, just like this. Okay. Make sure not to use too much force. You don't want to damage these wires, or your screen's not going to work. Okay. So just guide the wire out. So. Most likely, um, the connectors for this this cable are the same as these. Um, basically, you pop them up. I'm not 100% sure because I can't see it, but usually that's how this type of connector is going to be. Okay. Usually, if you're not sure, um, these kinds of things, you can just look for the parts online. So if you look for this, um, this model, the I.O. board, you can go on like eBay or something, and then you can check for the part. Somebody would have had uh, like pulled it out and take taking pictures of both sides and then you can see what it looks like all right well once you get those two connectors disconnected you'll want to lift the screen up about 90 degrees okay or you can leave it a little more than 90 degrees so that way you can get the screwdriver in and you'll use the ph1 or j1 screw screwdriver and then just remove the screws be careful make sure that if you're removing it that you hold on to the screen so it doesn't fall over because you don't want the screen to just fall or just be held by one screen and then damage itself okay so make sure while you're taking it out that you're holding on to it and keep the screws in order most of them are very similar in size um, so it's probably going to be okay if you um, mix them around but I like to put the same screws back in the same spots just in case there's any slight differences. Okay, one more screw. Alright, so now we've got the screen. Okay, so once you got all those screws, you can lift the whole screen out. And you can set this aside. There's not really much you can do with this thing. Um, but yeah, it looks like if you need to change the battery, um, I don't know, you might be able to lift it out at an angle and then slide it out, but if there's screws holding underneath, then actually there are screws holding underneath. So this model's kind of a bad design. Um, to take the battery out, you'd have to take the whole board out. So you'd have to take all these extra screws out and then lift this board out. Looks like this board would go up at an angle to take it out because the headphone jack is actually um, sticking out. So it's actually, um, stuck underneath the case so to remove it you'd have to lift it at an angle and then slide it out that way okay all right so now once you got all of that out now you'll want to remove um, these little rubber covers here so um, if you can't get it out with your nails or something usually it's you can use like a needle or like a thumbtack like this just go on the top corner and then top edge and then just pry it up all right on these rubber pieces, there's a little piece that sticks out. I don't know if you can even see that. But um, there's a part that sticks out, and you want that po uh, pointing towards the bottom edge here. Um, there's a little gap. So when you put this cover in, the part that sticks out will go into that gap. If you put it wrong, then it, it, it won't re um, lay completely flat. So, yeah. Just know that there's a little um, part that sticks out on those rubber pieces. Okay, once you get those two rubber pieces out, there's two screws underneath. Just take those two screws out. Okay. So this part will be a little tricky. Um, if you're not replacing the hinge and you're just replacing the screen, you actually don't need to undo the screws that hold it to the base of the laptop. Um, so I'll show you what I mean in a bit. So to get this, um, the screen out, you basically just get a pry tool or your fingernails and just go between the, the metal shell. Um, I don't know if you can see, but the metal shell and the case, and you can actually just 
pull on it to pry it out. So I push with my thumb on the back and then I pull with my fingernails down. So that's how you would take that out. So you just go all the way around. All right, once you get one side out, it's pretty simple. All right, then you can actually lay the screen down. So be careful with the connectors. You don't wanna smash them or anything and damage them, but you can lay it down just like this. So here you can see, um, if you had to take all of this stuff out, you can disconnect the screen and everything. Um, it, it'll just be kind of more difficult. Um, so if you don't really need to replace the whole hinge, if you don't need to replace the whole hinge and you just need to replace the screen, you can actually leave these hinges attached to the laptop. So that way you can lay this down on top of the rest of the assembly. And then when you have that, you can undo the screws that hold it down to the shell here. Um, so this part, I put some, um, what do you call it, thread locker to keep it, to keep the screws from backing out. So that way they don't get loose and then start moving around. So I'm not gonna undo the screws to kind of show you, but um, basically once you take the screws out, let me show you with the old hinges. But basically, once you take the screws out, um, there's two screws on each one. So there's two screws holding this hinge and then two screws holding this hinge. This one is the one that broke. Um, so once you take the screws out, you can uh, lift the whole thing up with these cables. Um, and inside these, there'll be a rubber piece. So you want to transfer it. So I transferred the rubber piece from the old one into the new one. And the cable, it just kind of like curls around and sits in there. So to put it back, you just want to put the cable back in and then and then you can screw these down. It'll be a lot easier if you put the cable in first and then screw these down. If you screw this down first and then try and put the screen in, um, the cable is going to kind of hit this piece and then you're going to have to kind of like maneuver and bend and twist things to get it in properly. So put these in first um, so that the cables are inside these little gaps and then you can put it down and then tighten the screws. Okay, and if you can get some red Loctite or uh, not Loctite thread locker, you can use any brand. You don't have to get specifically Loctite brand, but red thread locker. Um, because I notice a lot of these, uh, they'll put the blue kind and it'll still come loose eventually. And then usually when it becomes loose, instead of like a fluid like hinge movement, it's more like there's a gap. So it's more like a prying motion. And that's usually what causes these things to kind of break. Um, and then also this metal they use, it's, I don't know what it is, probably like some magnesium uh, uh, mix of metal with something else. Um, so these are very brittle. And I think uh, the customer said that they accidentally hit their screen and then it caused a sudden like snap. That's, that's probably how it broke. Um, but that's how you get the whole screen out. Once you're done, um, just snap it all back into place. Okay, it's not too difficult. Just go all the way around. All right. Snap it all back in. So if you needed to change the screen, you can do that. Um, I think they, let me open it again just to check. But I think this one, the screen is actually glued to the digitizer. So if you wanted to replace the screen, make sure that you get the whole assembly. So let me open it up and then check to show you. Yeah, so I don't know if you can see, but there's no screws holding the screen in place. So usually that means that the screen is actually glued inside. Um, I don't know if you can see the model number, B133HAN02.7. So that's the screen model number. So. But for this, if you wanted to replace the screen, you have to get the whole LCD assembly with the, um, with the digitizer attached. If not, you're going to have a real tough time separating the two pieces from here. So, yeah. So if you wanted, you can try doing that. But um, before you order the port part, try to um, separate the two layers if you're, if you're planning to do that. Excuse me. Okay. Um, but that's pretty much it. Now you just got to put it back. Um, it's basically just all the steps in reverse, so I'm not going to show that. Um, yeah, uh, so hopefully this video helped you. If it did, please like and subscribe because that'll help me. And thank you for watching. Bye.